Time to play with some clay. Well, as I'm researching photographs uh, from Indian models that I've had posed for me, uh, from reference material that I've saved, something to stimulate my mind as far as creativity uh, goes, and uh, I came across a couple of videos that I had produced, oh gosh, it's, it's got to be over 10 years ago. Um, of a couple of uh, monumental size clays that I did that were eventually cast into bronze. Um, one is of iron horn and one is of silent arrow. And I thought I'd share these videos with you with a little updated uh, voiceover uh, as you watch it. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Stopped at McDonald's for my breakfast and uh, getting ready to head over to uh, Alpine from Lehigh, Utah. And uh, hope I can figure out how to get on the freeway. These things tend to be a little confusing. Especially anyway, this is Mick Clay. He has been pointed up by what was the gentleman's name? That uh, worked on this? Uh, uh, Roger Hunt. Roger Hunt pointed this out for me, and I think he did an amazing job. I'll take some uh, views of it later. But right now, I'm going to just go to silent and just do some work. Well, here I am. Uh, the first day of almost a week that I spent in the foundry working on uh, a couple of uh, the clays that I had there. Uh, this one was pointed up by the foundry uh, by a, a gentleman, an artist in, in the foundry that works at the foundry by the name of Roger Hunt. Uh, foundries offer this service to all artists. Uh, every foundry does it differently and this, they used a small version of the uh, si Silent Arrow to point up this version this life size, a larger life size. This, this will be cast, or was cast in a uh, limited, a limited edition. And uh, here I am just adding detail that they didn't add onto the clay. That's why I'm there. This is a small version of Iron or uh, Silent Arrow. And what's amazing is how accurate. The gentleman that pointed this up got. Let me just turn it around so it's facing the same direction. And then you can see that piece there and that piece there are exactly the same. It's just fascinating how he did that. Well, it looks like I'm here before everybody else, so I'm going to get to work and try to get this guy as close to done today as I can so I can start the other one. Again, I'm adding more detail. Uh, this is to the uh, bow scabbard, now the face. It's uh, up to me to get the personality in the face. Uh, adding ribbon to the end of the hair ties. Just putting a little texture in the uh, leggings as well as uh, tacks with little round pieces of clay onto the uh, knife sheath. They put these details in like the knife sheath, but it's up to me to put the final uh, details in. That was just a short little clay <laughs> that was by another artist in the foundry. I'm here early again before everybody else, but uh, what I'm going to do is today I'm going to try to get these uh, the beadwork uh, etched in on the uh, shirt here. And so I'm going to start doing that uh, right now. Back on to doing detail work. It just 
mind-boggling amount of detail work you have to do on a, a monumental piece. Uh, you get one thing done and then you see a whole bunch of other ones that you have to do. Here I'm adding texture to the leggings as well as uh, uh, tacks to the ties around just below the knees. I'm putting a fringe on the edge of the uh, shirt and then reaching up underneath the fringe on the shirt itself to put texture in. This is a tool that the uh, foundry made. It was, a it was designed by me so that I could put uh, texture, fur texture, onto this, uh, this skin that's on the uh, warrior, warrior's head and back. Just made it easy. And this is uh, me putting texture into the feathers that will go onto the piece. Uh, the idea is to make the feathers look like real feathers. And here I'm plotting out uh, where I'm going to be putting beadwork and doing the fingernails and thumbnails and all that stuff. Like I said, it's just almost an endless uh, list of things you have to do when you're doing a life size even more than you have to do on a on a small version because a, the small version you don't go into as great a detail i'm uh, going to clean this up a little bit just to fill out a little holes in some of the more uh, prominent areas um, a lot of this fringe they're going to fill in in the mold making room they're going to fill in between the crevices i just don't have time to do that um, so they're going to do that themselves. I've already pointed out a few things that they will need to do. Um, not worried about getting the skin perfectly smooth uh, because there is a good sculptural quality to this piece. I kind of like that. All right, now this is the fourth day, and I'm putting a detail, a last detail, into the sculpture. I'm working on the hair to texture on his head and uh, adding wrinkles to his shirt. The, uh, this is the last day that I worked on this clay, and uh, I'm just getting ready to uh, turn it over to them to make the um, rubber mold and make the first casting in bronze. The foundrymen are unpacking or uncrating uh, iron horn. It got damaged on the way to the foundry. I, dr I transported it in a trailer, and the uh, legs broke. And so they repaired it, and when they finished repairing it, they brought it up to the studio that I'm working at in their foundry uh, so that I can put the final touches on this clay next. Now this is uh, iron horn, the small version, and this is the clay of it before I had it cast in bronze. It was a very successful bronze. Mountain Trails Gallery in Park City and Jackson Hole uh, wanted me to do a life-size version of both this and of Silent Arrow. And so this is uh, why I uh, undertook this uh, obligation. And they both were ready to be cast at the same time at the foundry. And I just had to basically go there and spend almost a week working on both of them. Now, this video coming up is where actually it was pictures of me uh, working on the clay. I really hadn't perfected the uh, talent of videoing myself sculpting yet. This is a long time ago when I first did this. So this is the uh, foam that I received from the 3D printer. Uh, it was just about six feet tall and it was very low in detail so I had to uh, put clay on it and completely re-sculpt the whole thing. This is the original pose from uh, Michael Badhand uh, that I took the idea for the sculpture from. These are wax uh, copies or wax uh, feathers that I'm sculpting here that will go on to the head of the, the warrior. This is the uh, rifle or actually the musket that I uh, sculpted. It was actually taken from a musket he had 
It was an authentic uh, Indian um, rifle. These are the clay feathers that I did for the bottom of the shield, as you can see on this uh, photograph. And then I worked on uh, the hair and the placement of the feathers and the bead work on the shirt. The beads I made by rolling out clay and running a comb across the roll of clay to make the beadwork texture. Details of the uh, head. I painted the wax feathers to look like clay so it wouldn't be confusing to the eye and also would help me see uh, what I had to do with it. The clay took me probably about two and a half months from start to finish once I got the uh, foam uh, uh, 3D version. And uh, it turned out, I think, pretty darn good. It certainly is different than a lot of monumental Indian pieces you see. This is just detail of the back of it and the front of it. What I used for the barrel of the gun was a uh, metal pipe. <laughs> This is me showing it at the uh, Mountain Trails Gallery in Park City. Just before uh, it was delivered to the foundry, we actually uh, took it from here right to the foundry. Here I'm just working on uh, the rifle in the gallery. Or, no, this is now in the uh, foundry. Sorry. <laughs> Working on the musket there and uh, the uh, quirt and the strap. What I'm doing is I made fringe for the bottom of the shirt. <coughs> and uh, here I'm applying it to the uh, shirt itself. scalp locks. This would be part of your scalp and the hair would be on one side. And in this case, uh, there'll be braided hair. So that's what I'm going to do now. So what I did was uh, to make the uh, scalps, uh, they had to be braided and I rolled out clay and then I put texture in the clay with a comb to make it look like hair. When you're doing something life-size, you sort of have to put a little more detail in it than, especially if there's a lot of detail in the clay in the first place. And here I've braided three uh, rolls of clay into a braid of hair, uh, or a scalp, that's uh, going to hang from the uh, stretched uh, skin for the scalp lock that's going to hang from the rifle or the musket. And I'm attaching the uh, braids of hair onto the uh, skin of the uh, scalp lock. I had Gloria D. actually string a piece of leather on a hoop uh, for me so that I could replicate the uh, scalp and do it accurately. Gloria D. is a uh, reproductionist. Uh, she does uh, a lot of in Indian clothing and items like that, uh, authentic stuff. Working on the hand. Now, I didn't, I couldn't find the other video that I shot of uh, me working on this clay. This is the only video I found. It's not complete. I spent probably a couple of days on uh, this clay, and this is only day one. And here I am uh, replacing... Uh, damaged, uh, you know, sculpted beads, they'd get smashed in transportation to the foundry. And so I'm taking them out and replacing with new ones that I've uh, re-sculpted and uh, just repairing the uh, beadwork.
finished up Silent Arrow this morning. It's ready to be cast. And I signed it. I've uh, repaired the beadwork on this piece and uh, finished the fringe on the bottom edge of this shirt, which originally was uh, wax. And I had to make it out of clay. I've got work to do on the hands. I stuck a tool back here because I've got to uh, do the uh, stitching on this edge here just like I did on this edge and I, I got it there to remind me to do that. Finished up the uh, blade of the uh, spear and uh, got the rifle in, in position and the hand on that uh, done. Finished up the uh, quirt, the riding quirt or the riding crop. That's what this uh, item is hanging off here. You'd use it to whip the horse. These are scalp locks. I've got those on. Made the strap for the gun. And uh, tomorrow I'll be working on the hair and uh, replacing any other beads I find that need to be replaced. I've got to do some uh, hangings off of uh, the spear here. Now, on the original clay, it's uh, um, ermine skins, but I think what I'm going to do is make it ribbons. I think ribbons will look more interesting. So, that's it for today. Well, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, finished up both these clays in a week and uh, had them cast in bronze. The only one I have photographs of is uh, this one of Silent Arrow. It was taken by a friend of mine at a gallery, at the gallery in Park City. Or no, actually down in Jackson Hole at Mountain Trails Gallery there. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.